Sorry, I don't love you. A friend I've grown accustomed to. Cause with you, something isn't wrong. Something isn't wrong. Something isn't right. Hey everyone, welcome to Geekdom is Back. This week our topic is the Arrowverse and Craig Manning is returning to discuss this. Craig, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Doing well. I have quite a few podcasts planned this week, so it's, <laughs> it's a lot all at once here for me. But... Yeah, I saw you were recording one last night with, uh, with Becky Yeah. Yellow Card. Yes, you do come up in that one, by the way. Just you know, oh, oh cool. Yeah. <laughs> Even I'll though everyone will, everyone will know that by the time they're listening to this, if they have listened to the yellow card one. But yeah. you were they'll be out first. Yeah, you were previously on to talk about Arrow, and we sort of did that at a strange time. We didn't do it in between seasons. We sort of just picked a time and just started talking about it, and it was like you yeah. know, on um, yeah, I think it was the. Was that the season break? Like, yeah, I think, I think we, we did, did it, it in right like before December. Christmas or yeah. something. Okay. So a lot has happened since then because I believe that was in the middle of last season. I want to say. Yeah, that was last last December. Yeah, that's that sounds right because I have been doing too many podcasts for a couple of years now, so I just sort of get everything jumbled. I'm like, wait, did I do this podcast first or this one? But we are actually going to start out with Arrow since that was the first of the Arrowverse shows. So basically, it was the first show before the Arrowverse even existed. And a lot of people thought that the show got off to a very good start. And it was a little darker, I want to say, for a CW show than I think people were used to. Because when you think of the CW, you do think a lot of, you know, those teen drama shows. But to do something yeah, yeah. like Arrow well, was—I mean, what they had what they had done before that was was Smallville. Um, that was like sort of the only superhero show that had happened before Arrow, and so I sort of thought, thought it was going to be like that, and then it was not at all. Yeah, and the thing is, you know, you have the Marvel Netflix shows now too, and those go even darker than I think anything Arrow has really done in a while, and. It's just yeah, one of those probably things. Probably darker than they need to be, in, in all honesty. They're a little tough to stomach in, in parts. Yeah, and the thing is, with all of the different channels and platforms that we're getting superhero shows on, the fact that the CW really seems to be dedicated to making these DC shows work for what they are is a really great sign, because with Arrow you have this strong start to the show. And then once they start adding in more shows, you know, things get a little bumpy here and there because they're trying to do so much with all of these individual shows and then still be able to tie them in and have these crossovers. But what did you think when Arrow first hit the CW? Uh, I really liked it. I actually, I think I didn't know that it was even coming until like the day it premiered. And then I read... Uh, something like earlier in that day, I think it was on AV Club. It was like a their What's On Tonight thing. Okay. And it's it compared it to like Batman Begins, and I, I also didn't really know anything about Green Arrow as a character other than Green Arrow as portrayed on Smallville, which I think is a very different version. Um, but I watched and I really liked the pilot. I thought that was a really solid episode. It definitely was darker for uh, a CW show. And sort of just darker for a superhero um, story, because like he was just like killing people left and right in that first episode. Right. Um, so yeah, I I jumped on with that. I think um, I sort of had this. Uh, this was this happened during my senior year of college, um, and I started watching and watched it regularly through the first half of the season, and then like my the, the second half of the semester, I had all evening classes. So I fell behind on every show I was watching, including that one. But um, I think like a year or a year and a half later, went back to the beginning and rewatched it with my um, my wife. Um, and we, we really loved those first two seasons especially. And um, I, I just think, you know, Stephen Amell was sort of the the anchor for the entire Arrowverse, I would right. say. Yeah. Um, he's sort of like their um, Iron Man, I guess. Um and I, I think he's great. I think that was really good casting, both 
sort of as he plays the character in like in terms in terms of like physicality, which is very important to these shows because like a lot of them do their own stunt work and um, like the choreography and the fight sequences are really cool. So um, yeah, I I was really on board from the beginning with that. And uh, how about you? Yeah, and this was actually one of the first superhero shows that I really started to dive into because. I was aware of Smallville, but I wasn't really aware of any sort of repercussions it had on the DC universe or anything like that. And when they started with Arrow, I guess it just hit me at the right time because I hadn't gotten into comics until way later. Like I want to say college was really when it started because I had a friend who was big into reading non-Marvel and DC comics, actually. So he was introducing me to things like why the last man and then it sort of snowballed from there and then when I did have my job I was buying comics myself because I was like hey I have money to spend on things so why not be a nerd and dive into comics (laughs) and you know this show had already been on the air for at least two or three seasons by that point I want to say because I had my job in 2015 and that's when I really started buying comics more frequently and everything like that and Okay. Like you, Green Arrow wasn't a character I knew much about. I knew he was the dude with the bow and arrow and wore green. <laughs> you know, that was sort of <laughs> it. And, you know, it, it's interesting because for Green Arrow, he's not a superhero in the typical sense. He's not really going to stand out and talk to the public like Superman does or anything like that. And he's much more of a vigilante in the way that Batman operates. And I think with how they compared this to Batman Begins when it was starting makes sense because of sort of the gritty overtones that they have throughout all of the seasons, because you're not getting these bright shows with arrow or these bright scenes or anything like that they're really sort of showing you the dark depths of the city and what is wrong with it Mm -hmm. yeah and he like he very much is a vigilante like the flash a lot of what they do like he's running around during the day and saving people yeah Um, but like pretty much all arrow action sequences are going to be set either indoors or um, outside at night so, yeah, that is sort of an, an interesting thing. He's definitely, um, as they've portrayed him, at least more of a, a Batman type, though he does do a lot of um, of killing in those first few seasons. Yeah. And I feel like he's doing it again now, like he stopped for a while, but, you know, now they don't really seem to, to worry about it. Yeah, we don't really see him tying them up in the back alley behind the police station anymore or anything like that, like we did for a couple seasons there. No, maybe he decided it was it was just too much, uh, too much work. Yeah, so I do want to talk specifically about the highs and lows of the show because I think you and I are mostly in agreement with how well some of these seasons are have done and we thought you know the first two seasons were off to a good start and then you get the racial ghoul season in season three i believe yes yes which is rough yeah and then you have damien dark in season four and for me i prefer these shows where if you have a villain they either show up in one episode like the rogues do tip in typical fashion you know they come and go and then you can have, you know, some overarching theme for the season, but you don't necessarily need to have a single villain for an entire season because I feel like Mm -hmm. with as long as these shows go, because these are 20 plus episode seasons, I believe still. And I think, you know, they're hitting 23 episodes maybe this season, or that's at least what I saw for The Flash anyway. Yeah, I think think it's been 23. I think that's the... uh... That's usually the order for um, for Arrow and Flash. Uh, Legends is shorter. Yeah. I'm not really sure about Supergirl because they've done some weird stuff with that. But um, yeah, they're so long. And to have a villain for that long, it just seems like way too much. Like 
sure, Raish might not have been in every single episode necessarily, but it was still all about that character in one way or another. And I feel like that just distracts from how much effort you could be putting forward into these secondary villains and everything like that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, I think what's interesting to me is during like the, the, those first two seasons, um, like you saw, like the, the villains were Malcolm and Slade, so they did have like the big bads, quote unquote. Right. But like Malcolm, you knew there was like a, a dark archer, but you didn't know it was him until like almost halfway through the season. And so he was sort of flitting around in the darkness. And then you didn't, Oliver didn't know it was him until, I want to say, like, second or third to last episode. And then with with the second season, it was sort of a similar thing. I don't think we even saw, like, Slade was in the whole season because he was a crucial part of the flashbacks. Right. Um, So it was sort of implicit that he was going to be the bad guy. But again, I think he turned up, like, around Christmas that year. Um Whereas Ra's al Ghul and, and Damien Dark, like Damien Dark was in the first episode of that of season four. And he, I think, was in every episode of the season and was like it was there was no question about him being the bad guy or not. Like it was ob- I mean, like obviously with that actor, he's pretty much always going to be the bad guy. But um, yeah, I think I think you're you're on to something there because I've always and in movies, too, I sort of uh, I, I prefer the villains who like sort of work more in the darkness for a while and then and then sort of come out and get more screen time toward the end. Like I think that's what I really like about the Joker in um The Dark Knight. In the first half he's sort of he's killing people, but you don't see him in every scene. He's sort of used sparingly. Um I, I think that is sort of the way to go with building an effective villain because otherwise like you need a reason for them to stick around for like 8 months which very rarely makes sense. (laughs) Exactly. And with season two, you also have Roy coming into the picture and you have Laurel, you know, having this idea that she wants to be able to fight back too. And, you know, we see her quite a bit in the boxing ring, you know, training and everything. I don't know if that's necessarily season two or when exactly that happened, but it's early on. Okay. Yeah. Um, Because Sarah came back in season two, and I don't think Laurel... Like, Laurel... Season two is when Laurel had a drinking problem, I think. Okay. Um, And Sarah was sort of the the badass. And then when they inadvisably killed Sarah off, uh, I think that's when Laurel decided she wanted to pick up the mantle, I think. Okay, yeah, because it is in season two that Sarah does come back, and for a while there, they don't know it's Sarah, and I think having that storyline and starting to train Roy, they had a lot more character development going on in those first two seasons, and I feel like they've really brought that back with the new team and everything now, but with seasons three and four, you know, Laurel's character development into Black Canary didn't feel nearly as smooth as, you know, Oliver training Roy to be a vigilante. And then you have the whole ordeal with Thea being trained by Malcolm. And it just really felt like they were doing a disservice to some of the female characters in this. And I think that sort of set them back a bit on top of having Raish and Damien Dark as the, you know, main concerns for two seasons back to back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've, sort of my biggest criticism of, of this show, and I guess all of them, but definitely this one, is sort of the handling of the female characters. Because mm-hmm. I feel like they have like very strong female characters, but then the way they write them is sort of like, it's always in service of what Oliver's story is, which I don't, I don't like very much. Um, I thought Sarah was sort of an exception to that. I right. thought she was really interesting, and I'm really glad that you know they unkilled her. Um, but that's that was sort of where I think that's like the the moment it all went wrong uh, when they when they killed her because they killed her in such a stupid way. Too. Right. Yeah. So. They decided to kill both Lance sisters and 
bring them both back in a sense. They didn't literally bring Laurel back, but they did with Sarah. And then now we have Black Siren making appearances. And it's just one of those things where it's like clearly they wanted to keep the actress on, but they just did her initial character such a big disservice that it would have been hard for them to continue with that. And I think, you know, they do have something good going with Felicity because Oliver is very aware that he needs Felicity and she is pretty much the smartest person in the room. I know we have Curtis now, so that sort of balances that out because it's like they're the two giant nerds in the room and they can sort of figure out everything without, you know, the muscle man needing to butt in. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I like the killing off of characters in general is, is a problem, I think. I mean, it's sort of inevitable in this kind of show, I guess, but it seems like it's the only way they know how to raise the stakes. And it, like, having having Damien kill um, Laurel was sort of the way of, of legitimizing him as a villain, I guess. Where I, I would have been fine if he had just been the sort of goofy, like, jokey villain like he was on Legends last year. Like, I think that, that would have been better. Yeah. So yeah, they killed off Sarah and then they killed off Laurel and like now like Thea's life is hanging in the balance. Um, and I think like I-, I was never a huge fan of Laurel. I think the actress is sort of limited in what she can do. I thought like having her as um, I-, I liked her more in season one actually than I did at- in any later version. Yeah. But both both Sarah and Thea, I really liked the development of those characters, and it's sort of a shame that they were used in the way they were. Yeah, and that sort of brings us into season five, which was when we really saw a pretty drastic change because Thea has walked away, Laurel's dead, and Oliver is sort of just trying to do stuff on his own, and it's clearly not working out very well, and (laughs) Felicity is able to talk him into training a new team, and I really do like the characters that we see there, and even though not all of them are still part of the team in season six now, you have Wild Dog, Mr. Terrific, who is Curtis, we've already mentioned him, you had Artemis, who, you know, wasn't really on the team the entire time. And then no, you have... No, clearly. <laughs> yeah, you have Ragman, who was... I believe his name was Corey. So you have this sort of ragtag group of people, and Oliver has to find a way to get them to work together. And later on, you have Dinah Drake, who is known as Black Canary in the comics. So I think, you know... That's another reason why they had to sort of kill Laurel off, because then they wanted to make room for a new Black Canary on top of that. And, you know, I highly doubt that was an afterthought, but I don't think they were like, oh, we killed Laurel, so let's get Dinah Drake now. And it's just one of those things where you do have a version of Laurel in the comics who is Black Canary, and the way they do the comics is very hard to follow because they will reboot them so often and Mm -hmm. they will you know go in so many different directions like right now there are like four different batman comics going on and (laughs) they aren't all necessarily tied together like in one batman has a whole team in one batman's pretty much by himself and then you have this other totally different batman and you know the comics are not quite as interwoven as the tv shows have been known to be and i don't say that saying the comics aren't interwoven at all because when they do events you can tell when things are happening in the same timeline and everything like that but i feel like with the arrowverse they definitely make it way more obvious that these things are happening at the same time and if you haven't watched this week's episode of the flash that will basically explain exactly what i mean (laughs) Yeah, I did. I did watch that. Are you talking about the like the newspaper? Yes. Yes. Says, yeah. We will leave it at that. Um, the newspaper. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just in case. I think sort of to wrap up the arrow part. I think they they got it back on track last season. I don't. I don't think four season four was terrible. I think season three was kind of 
bad. Um, just because I, I didn't think the guy who played Ra's al Ghul, I didn't think he was, he was up to the task. And season four was kind of just like, I don't know. It was it did it lacked focus, but it had it had some some good episodes. Um, but last season I thought was really strong. I thought Adrian Chase as Prometheus was a really good villain. And again, they they didn't let you in on that until a good chunk of the way through the season. It's not like we knew from day one who Prometheus was, and it was sort of this drag of a season. And they, you know, they gave us Talia al Ghul, and they introduced these other aspects that they didn't quite get as complex with when you had Damien Dark and Raish in seasons three and four. Mm -hmm. And plus, I think that uh, I just like, I'm I'm kind of tired of the villains that like either want to destroy the world or blow up a city or something like that. I liked that that Adrian Chase was sort of on a personal vendetta and he wasn't interested in like blowing up Star City. Just, just an island. To... Just an island. <laughs> yeah, just an island, but you know, that's fine. But like how he got under Oliver's skin and sort of like made him question a lot of stuff I thought was interesting and and actually led to some character development that we hadn't had. Yeah, in a he, while. he definitely played a lot more mind games than I think any of the other villains had done because not only did he plant Artemis in the team, Oliver didn't realize it was happening. And I think that and being able to figure out that William was his son and all of these other things that Prometheus was able to do really took a toll on him mentally and that is sort of what made the villain so much more interesting. And then I thought that cliffhanger was strong. I'm not 100% crazy about how they resolved it yeah. or have seemed to resolve it. But, um, you know, like the the premiere of, of this season is fine. And that's all we've seen at this time. Um, but I hope, I hope they, they sort of go in some new directions. Like... And I think they could. I don't really. I don't even know who the big bad is supposed to be. Um, so that that's that's promising, I guess. Yeah, and they can definitely take this current season in quite a few different directions. And by the time you are all listening to this, we we will have watched at least a few more episodes of Arrow. So you know, we don't have the best idea after that premiere, but. You know, if they bring Slade back some more, I will totally be fine with that because we know Slade is going to go look for his son. And I feel like they left that off to where they are going to want to give us an update at some point. Like, you can't just tell us Slade is going to look for his son and then never let us know if he found his son <laughs> or anything right. like that. Yes. So I think... Yes, I hope they'll bring him back as, as a recurring character this season because I think he is great. Um, and I think the dynamic between him and Oliver now is sort of fascinating because yeah. because of everything that's happened and then you know he he was sort of he came he came to Oliver's aid in the finale last year so um yeah yeah I'm, I'm intrigued to see what happens um I didn't I again I didn't think it was like a, a an A plus premiere or anything and I think you know when you blow up a whole island you probably have to kill more than one person <laughs> but um yeah, we'll see. Yeah, and we also have the idea of Oliver trying to be a dad to someone who yes. doesn't want him to be his dad, basically. So I think we'll get a lot of personal development with Oliver this season on top of, you know, him being a vigilante and where that takes us. Yeah, I'll, I'm interested in that part, too. Um, I don't know. I wonder how long they can keep him a vigilante with you know having a kid and also now you know being outed <laughs> as the mayor who kills people with a bow and arrow basically so yeah I'm, I'm i'm interested to see where they go and i hope uh it's as good as last season same here i think that would definitely be a very smart move on their part to sort of just build off of what they had last season but we're going to move on to The Flash now because this is the second of the Arrowverse shows to have been started. And this one is on season four now, I believe. 
that sounds right. <laughs> yep. Yep, that's right. And I think what they did with The Flash, like we mentioned already, it's a much brighter show than Arrow is because Barry is going out and doing these things during the day and they have Flash Day and they really celebrate this character so much in Central City. And what they did with season one that I've really loved was the fact that they were not afraid to throw a ton of villains at you. And they were villains who could come back repeatedly and still have an effect because, you know, we had Heat Wave, Captain Cold, Golden Glider, and a bunch of the rogues gallery, basically. And the show just really hit it off so well. And then it was another show where it sort of just went downhill from there. So hopefully yeah, yeah. they're going to get this one back on track as well. But when this first started, where you really into the idea of having a series of shows like this to watch yeah um i so they did like uh i think it was late season two um they sort of did the backdoor pilot um late season two with arrow they did the backdoor pilot for the flash so uh grant gustin like guest starred on arrow and he came into town to help um it was basically helping with the slade thing yeah and then he, he went home and got struck by lightning and uh then you know we caught up with that um a few months later when the show actually premiered but i thought that was uh, an interesting way to start it um it was and we can talk about this later but it was a much more natural um build into a new show than what they did with the legends of tomorrow it, stuff yeah definitely <laughs> easily <laughs> um, so yeah when that started i like i i thought that grant was perfect for um barry so that was a strong start. Um, and then I liked what they did with the backdoor pilot. So yeah, I was uh, I was definitely on board when they started. I also thought, like, I really like Tom Cavanaugh, who plays yes. Harrison Wells. Um, so that, those, those factors sort of got me um, interested in it. And I think they did a really good job, as you said, in that first season, sort of keeping, like, the vibe of, like, the... The, the Silver Age comic book. Uh, it really felt like you were watching like a comic book and not like a, a, a gritty comic book adaptation. Um, so it was bright and it was funny and they weren't afraid to joke around and they had a lot of... like I think the cast just had good chemistry from the start. Um, and it, it definitely seemed like they wanted it to be a very different show than Arrow. And then sort of in season two and three, it became like similarly angsty um which i did not like and similarly like based around these villains who were dangerous and go going to going to kill people and i don't know i think i think they lost the plot for a little while um and the good news is that this season seems to sort of be going back to like the goofier flash yeah uh which is definitely promising because i don't think I don't think I could have taken another season like the season three. I thought the season three was largely awful. So, um, yeah, this is another one that I'm hoping they can they can keep it together. Um, I don't really like that they're sort of focusing on the villain already. It seems um, even if they're they're sort of leaving that in the uh, like the tag scenes at the end. Yeah. Um, but it does seem like they're gonna they're gonna do sort of a villain of the week thing for a little while before we get to just battling the villain and the the villain's also not another speedster which which is also a good thing yeah the the villain that we've been seeing at the end is the thinker so we probably can't expect to see barry really fighting him in the sense that we're used to seeing him fight right. villains but the thing is it seems like you know the samurai from the premiere and kilgore and these upcoming villains that are appearing in the episodes are sort of the thinker's minions at least that's what i've gathered from watching the first two episodes because they're sort of yeah yeah he's getting these updates on you know how they performed and where they are and all of this stuff. And I think that's a much more interesting approach. And like you said, not another speedster, thankfully, because, you know, with 
season two, they really started to overcrowd the show with speedsters because you have Wally's arrival, you ha- you have Jesse, you have Jay Garrick, then you ha- you know you have the other Jay Garrick, and it it was just like yeah. way too was much it, was at it once. Zoom? Was it Zoom in season two? I honestly like get seasons two and three. Yeah, see, season two was Zoom, and then season three was Savitar, which was just was Barry. Barry. So I, yeah, it's, <laughs> I think this is a much better start already. And I know some people were kind of like, well, they resolved that quickly. But in, you know, their reality, six months have passed. So did we right. really need to necessarily see more of those six months without Barry, where it's just, you know, Wally trying to make up a new team name <laughs> and that sort of right. thing? And I, you knew that was going to happen. Yeah. Too. Like as soon as they ended last season, I don't know why they even did it. Honestly, I think it would have been fine to just sort of leave it off and then start this season with a completely, like, blank slate. Because you knew they were going to bring him back, like, the first episode. And, like, there weren't going to be serious consequences to it. And I would be surprised if they, like, bring back the Speed Force issue again. So, I don't know. It it does seem kind of silly, but at the same time, I, I'm glad they did not dwell on it. Plus, it's exactly what they did with Flashpoint to start season three. That was resolved within the first episode, too, because all of this time had passed between, you know, the finale and the new premiere. And it's one of those things where I might not necessarily agree with it. You know, like maybe they could have given us a single episode without Barry and sort of updated us on all of these changes that had been made because we sort of just jumped right into things. And it's like, you know, Iris is in charge of telling them what to do and Cisco's out there, (laughs) you know, being vibe. And that is something I think I would have liked to see a little more of, but I don't think we would have needed, you know, several episodes without Barry to justify how they ended the last season. No, I think, I think uh, what they did for this was fine. I think with Flashpoint, they sort of, they resolved that too quickly, even yeah. though, like, technically, Flashpoint had consequences that led to the rest of the season. I think it would have been more interesting if they had just done, like, half a season before Barry, like, reversed the timeline again. I think that would have been, that would have also sort of given them a blank slate. And um, then it would have made, like, the consequences feel, like, more connected to something. Whereas the way they did it, like, he went and created Flashpoint, and then first episode of the season, he uncreated Flashpoint, or so he thought. Um, I think they they sort of botched that a little bit. Yeah, and because Flashpoint is such a huge comic book event, too, I think anyone who is a fan of that comic was like, but how did he fix this so quickly, (laughs) and everything like that? (laughs) Because... In the time that passed for Flashpoint, Barry was in Flashpoint. He wasn't working to fix it like Cisco was working to get Barry out of the Speed Force for six months and wasn't telling anyone about it. So I think, you know, giving Cisco that storyline there for of what he was doing for six months sort of helped ease how they fix this situation for the start of season four. But Flashpoint, it was just like, okay, well, that happened. And, you know, I don't want to be too terribly harsh on these shows because I've still gotten a huge amount of enjoyment out of them. And, you know, you and I both hit the chorus forums to sort of talk about these things. And like I said, we had done an entire episode on Arrow before, which I'll link to in this. And, you know, who knows, maybe down the line, we'll still do a follow-up from that point to, you know, the next few seasons or something, because we have no clue how long any of these shows are going to last. Right. Yeah. 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 So with the flash, I guess in, 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 in brief, um, I thought it like kicked off really strong. I, that first season is, I think not quite as strong as arrow season two, but probably the next best of any of these shows. Um, but then seasons two and three were, were not, I was, I was sort of getting to the point at the end of last season where I was wondering if I was going to want to keep watching this show. And the first two episodes of this season, um, have been entertaining and fun enough to sort of 
re-energize my interest, I guess. Um, so I'm hoping they, they, they keep going with that and keep making it fun. Because I think that's what this show does differently than, um, than Arrow really well. Like, I don't, I don't think this show should become like a, a different version of Arrow, which is sort of where they were going for a little while. Yeah, and the different villain this season too, I think will help with a lot of problems this show suffered from with the last two seasons. And you know, it's a bummer that we won't get as much of Tom Cavanaugh and I don't even know if we know how much of him if any we are getting this season, but we know Harry is over there on Earth 2 mm-hmm. or w- whatever Earth it is. I get all the numbers confused now cuz that brings over so many different people. But, you know, yeah. Harry and Jesse are still there. I think he's still technically a, a regular, so um, he should be cropping up pretty soon. But yeah, we haven't seen him at all in the first two episodes. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. Like, like they could just go get another version of him, which has sort of been one of the fun, one of the few highlights of the last few seasons, yeah. I guess, is that we've gotten, he's been able to play three sort of very different versions of the same character, which I've enjoyed. And I think that's fun, too, because... It shows that they are willing to use the multiverse in different ways because you also have Gypsy, who Cisco is now in a relationship with, or at least still is, but during our recording of this. And, <laughs> you know, it's just so much fun to have them really plucking things out of the multiverse because we don't really see that in Arrow as much and with Legends because of the time travel things are just all wonky in that show for reasons we will get into shortly but before we wrap up the Flash conversation I do want to put a little focus on the women in this show because you have Caitlin and Iris and well first off before we get into that I want to note none of these people have jobs except for Barry and Joe so I don't know what they are doing. What is going on? (laughs) How do they make money? I know it's like you know and there is no way Barry can afford that nice apartment on a CSI tech salary. (laughs) No and like how did the Arrow people make money? I mean I guess Oliver is the mayor but like Felicity's like crashed two companies into the ground now right? Like that's That's what happened. I don't know. I don't understand how any of them have to. Yeah. And I'm wondering if if Diggle does stuff for like Argus every once in a while. And that's how he gets paid doing that stuff for Argus every now and then. But, you know, now we have Dinah in a lieutenant role and you have. Yeah, I guess more of them work. Yeah. uh... You have Renee and Lance involved with Oliver in the mayor's office and you have people working. And for all we know, Felicity could be multitasking and just like creating a bunch of things like Curtis does and just like selling them to other people. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but like on the flash, Iris was a reporter. Yes. Right? And then she like, quit. Did she quit? I think she did. I can't remember if she quit or if she just stopped. Cause I think she kept, she either kept missing deadlines or she kept wanting to write about things that weren't being assigned to her or something. I, I do vaguely remember that something happened with Iris to where she just stopped doing her job. And now it's like she's the boss, not like the boss in your typical boss sense, but she's sort of the coordinator for the team because she's like, okay, here's an alert. You guys go here, you go here. And you know, this is what we need to do. And right. I think it is an improvement for her character because then that means we get to see more of her. And then, you know, we already have the couples therapy subplot there so that, you know, her and Barry will sort of have a lot to work through because they are not only getting married, but they are working full time together now. And it's one of those things where they did bring Caitlin back too. And I think that was a good move because I think we'll get to see more of that story of what she was doing those six months because with the way the premiere was, we got a little glimpse yes, of something, something going there's something on. There. Yeah. So I think exploring that will let them do Caitlin's character a lot more justice this season than they have in previous seasons. And she's already, you know, stepped up and been like oh no you know maybe it's this and this and this and it's just not like oh caitlin we need you can you come over here <laughs> right yeah I, I i've always liked um caitlin and cisco yeah i think they're good assets for this show and i think they've written caitlin's character a lot better than they've done the um like with her struggle between being herself and being killer frost i think that has been a lot better than the uh 
the Laurel Black Siren thing. Yeah. And I think she is better at playing a bad guy than um, Katie Cassidy is. Um, so, yeah. But I, I feel like they can't really decide what to do with Iris, um, like, apart from Barry. Um, yeah. So I hope that is a problem they, they figure out how to solve um, this season. Because last season, like, the whole, like, she was just waiting around to die the whole time. Or be saved by someone. It was that was that was not great. Yeah, and that could also be a reason why she left her job too. It was like, oh hey, someone's going to kill me. Maybe this isn't as important as I thought it was at the moment. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's probably what it happened. But yeah, I I feel like the reporter thing has been done plenty, and I'm sure we'll discuss that briefly with Supergirl coming up here, but it it's yes, they can't all be reporters. Like Yeah, and I guess with Iris, it's different because she's more like a Lois Lane in this sense, and mm -hmm. she's not the superhero herself trying to conceal an identity. <laughs> yes, yes, that's true. But there are a lot of reporters in the DC universe <laughs> already. It's like, you guys, don't you know media is dead? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she could go be they're, like they're a radio show video. host or yeah, a video. You have to pivot to video. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she can be a YouTube star. There we go. Okay, solved. <laughs> okay, yeah. You and I will just write Iris going forward on the Flash. Thank you. Come again. <laughs> okay. We'll, yeah, we'll call. We'll call them up and we'll we'll uh, tell them we've solved their problem. Yeah, I do think that this season is definitely headed in the right direction, though. And I think on that note, we can move on to the wackiest of the shows, which is Legends of Tomorrow. And is this one you are also watching on a regular basis still? Yes. Yes. And I think, like, I don't know. This one might be my favorite right now. Like, it's just so ridiculous and so funny. Um, and they, like, they get, like, random people to guest star, like, Billy Zane right. was on last night. I don't know how they how they pulled that one. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I just think this one is, and it, it wasn't in the first season. Like, the first season is is not very good. Right. But once they realized that it wasn't going to be, like, this epic uh, like serious drama and just like made it like a bunch of funny people like messing up time and then having to fix their mistakes I think it got a lot better I think what they did well with the first season was giving Heatwave and Captain Cold sort of a little bit more character development because they put them in a very different role and it was just one of those things where they had to do something with those characters. And because of how well received they were on The Flash, I feel like it would have been hard to just sort of write them off and not have them be on The Flash anymore without putting them somewhere else. And right. in that first season, it's a lot about getting the team together and sort of finding the team dynamic and everything like that. And Snart makes this big sacrifice captain cold does to specify more but it was one of those things where i think that sacrifice sort of allowed them to really figure out the dynamic of the team and then move forward from there and even though i really like snart as a character and he played it so well i still feel like you know between 